Okay, here we are in the shed and look what we're looking at. Look at the John Deere 60 here. Um, we're getting ready to take everything apart because it's time to get this bad boy moving. And it should only take a few hours to actually do this. Uh, I do have the parts that I need. I don't know why Tim threw that over there, but what's this? What did you throw this book over here for? I have a service manual, tractor manual for the John Deere 60. Um, that's just an empty box. Ah, I got everything that I really need, including the emblem for the front there, uh, is all here. I got gauges. This is all just dusty stuff. Here's a couple of things in there. The new clutch cover. The connecting rod that I needed so badly. And these parts here that I didn't need so badly, but Tim felt that I did. Because you can see how bent up they are. But anyways, got the new parts there, so... Got the clutch pieces there, the flywheel. There's the old bearings out of the old connecting rod. And what we're going to do, because these are the parts that we need to put everything back together again uh, to make that 60 run, except for my crankshaft. Why I have no crankshaft, I don't know, but I'm pretty certain that that crankshaft should be on this board. All right, so I figured I should probably say something as I'm tearing this apart. I got the flywheel cover off, and... Uh, I don't know if this flywheel is new or not. I've seen several John Deere uh, flywheels on other tractors that are this color red. You don't have to take it completely off. Um, you can if you want, but anyway. So I'm not sure whether this is a new one or not. Uh, most anything I've seen, John Deere really pretty much paints things green all the way around. So, all right, so I got the thrust washer off, and I was wondering about the timing marks for this flywheel. Um, they are here and here. So before I get going on, I don't know if you can see them, I can. But before I get going on tearing that thing off of there, I'm going to make sure that there is one on the new crankshaft that's going to be going in there. And, of course, there better be. If not, I'm going to have to fit. Yep, there it is. The lines are there. Cool. As you can see them there at the tip of my finger. So anyway, yeah, that's a good deal. Um, that says 767. Yeah. Okay, so we're well on our way. Timothy's actually pulling off the other side. Um, I don't think we need to take this off. Yeah, that's busted. What is it? Well, we can weld that. Um... Yes, you will have to take this off. You're going to have to clip these. Clip this here or undo it and unstring that entire wire. All right. Okay, that just keeps it from undoing. So Tim's working on that side, and I'll be working on this side. Hopefully I can get this side off before Tim gets his side off. <laughs> okay, so I've heard that these things are insanely hard to get off. Got it. Um, they're really not when you have a funky-looking little wood wedge like this. And what you do is you just kind of stick her in there and give her a few smacks. That spreads it enough to get off the, uh, to break the, the tension loose and uh, she'll come right back out of there. So uh, I'd like you to see me pull it off of there because it is heavy as a box of lead. But there, let's see if you can see that. Oh, there it is. One miserable flywheel. <laughs> Okay, hopefully you saw that. Oh, what the heck is this? I'm recording and doing other stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can see that the seal... Oh, look at that. There's a pin there. Got some wear on my teeth. What the hell is that going to? Well, that's from the starter. If you try to... Yeah, that's just from the starter engaging the uh, ring gear. Uh, but anyways, you can see that there's a leak in the... Uh, in the seal so we won't have to worry about that because I got a new one in the Felpro seal case. Okay so we got that flywheel off of there now I've got this loosened up uh, this is the main bearing housing uh, I have new ones over there uh, well new kind of new I have to actually take this part off Tim is putting the brake drum back on by the way um, yeah, I gotta pull. I think I gotta pull that off there and take that seal, that seal packing and all that crap out of there. Um, yeah, shouldn't be too big of a deal, I don't think. 
Maybe I'll just slide the whole thing as one piece off and then deal with that later. But anyways, that's what I'll show you that one. Oh, again. Tim, what, what kind of disease do you have? What is that disease? Tim? What do you call that disease? Heart and ass disease. And heart and ass disease is what? Sitting on your ass too much. Yeah, ain't got the heart to get off your ass. Heart and ass disease. Anyways, what Tim's doing, actually Tim's doing quite well. Um, Tim is taking the brake drum off, brake housing, that whole thing. Uh, you have to do that in order to get the uh, the uh, drive gear assembly out of there. So, yeah, he's working diligently. Just don't break my lever when you're done there. Get it off yet? No? So anyways, Tim's doing that. Come on, man. I'm waiting. What do you got? Get it? You got it? Wait. What? Wait till it broke the wagon. How close are you? So close you can feel it? I want to see you pull this thing off of here. It's like this, this uh, uh, yeah, dramatic moment. The uh, climax to the video when Tim pulls off the brake drum. This is the brake drum, the brake housing. Well, the brake drum, housing, gear crap, all that stuff that's in there. John Deere Ingenuity. Get your shoelaces wrapped around that bad boy. Woohoo! I'll bet you snap your shoelace right off. What do you think, huh? All right, let's see you pull it off. Come on, muscles. There it is. Oh, careful, careful. Oh, look at that. Would you look at that? Look at that, that's where the oil slings up and then runs down and lubricates that crazy thing. But anyways, put her in a special two. spot. Well, you have to have an in and an out, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead, put her in a special spot, get it out of my hair. Somebody's had this apart not that long ago. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, what Tim's gonna do is, I actually have the new bushing for in this clutch lever, um, but what Tim's gonna do is he's gonna pull all these bolts out of here and what we're gonna, me and him will very gently. Hey, you can see the differential. What? You can see the differential. I know. See? Now you just took it out of timing. Look what you did. You now it's all out of timing. Oh shit. Anyway, this is what I'm kind of worried about is the timing on this. This is just the. No, this is just the driver gear. We're not even gonna worry about that. There's no timing involved there that I know of. Um. Yeah, there's a snap ring here. That'll have to come off. I believe that'll have to come off of there. And that whole thing should come out of there without... This whole thing, I can leave that t that gear on there. Yeah, go ahead and pull all that cover stuff off of there, and uh, we'll be right back to it. Okay, so back to my side over here. Um, I've got this thing loose. The only thing that's... Here, Have see this? Seen yeah, I saw it yesterday. No, so anyways, this is all, all I've got to do here now is just wait for Tim. Because Tim's like having issue issues over there. But anyways, yep, we'll get back to it in a minute. Yeah. Alright, so anyways, Tim's got this thing all pretty well apart. Um, I'm going to have heart and ass disease too. Uh, all we have to do now is actually remove this. This here. Nut. This housing should come off. And then, uh... Yeah, once we get the housing off of there, then we gotta remove this big one and this gear. And then the main bearing is behind that. So once we get that apart, then we should all be ready to rock and roll. So this will all come off, that'll all come off. Then I should be able to dis Oh fart man, that hurt right in the face. You know what? You gotta watch these lights too. Damn. Anyways, I could uh probably do this while Tim's over there, and that is well, maybe I'll just leave that go. The piston, I think the piston, oh, that's all the way forward. God, I'm hoping I can remove that. And, uh, but anyways, we'll figure out what we got. Because I got to take that, this piston has to come completely out. Or maybe not completely out, but out far enough that I can get to that rod, uh, the wrist pin. And then I can put the new one in. If not, then I got to pull the head. And I'm not really looking forward to pulling that head. But uh, I'll do it. It doesn't matter. So anyways, Tim, hurry up and eat that so we can get this thing apart. 
So I'm gonna start chiseling away on that thing, that castle nut to get that off. All right, so we got that cover off of there. That came off pretty easy. Hopefully they gave me the right gaskets. I mean, I paid 200 and some dollars for the gasket kit. But anyway, uh, Tim right now is pulling these wires off of here. So we can, hey, you gotta take the wire completely out of there, you. I, I, can't, get, I can't get it to bend. Cut it. You can't just flail that wire around in there. You'll bend this thing there. All right, so uh, yeah, he's gonna take that off, and this is the rear main bearing, or the main bearing, one of them. The right side main bearing, which I have a new one of these too. Um, yeah, what else was I gonna say? Yeah, so that's what we're working on. We're just trying to get that stuff out of there, and uh, we'll have this crankshaft out of here in no time at all. Right, Tim? Right, just say right. Right, Dad? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We are doing well, me and Tim here, right? Yes. We have a great big hole. Hey, Tim, where are you? Oh, you're on the other side of a John Deere tractor. We can see right through it. Um, anybody wants to see what the inside of a 321 cubic inch two-cylinder engine looks like, there it is. Here, anybody? That's cool. I mean, these things are so incredibly large that you can just pass the camera right on through. What do you think, Tim? You got it? Yep. Okay, so I'm over here now. Hi. Can you see me? Yes. Okay, good. Now pass it back. Oh. Uh, don't, don't drop it. I'm just not sure that... Okay, so anyway, there's a hole down at the bottom. That is your oil drain plug. And that thing with the screen around it, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, that is the oil pump induction. And right there, as it drives off the camshaft, is the oil pump so that shaft runs right straight down there's all kinds of oil lines and stuff in here and I may have damaged this one this guy right here I'm not hundred percent sure but it doesn't look too thrilled but I'm gonna take it the rest of the way out anyway uh, just so I don't damage any more as I got a lot of cleaning to do in there yeah, full of sludge now hey don't 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 you didn't turn that one way or the other did you Whoa, that just got really heavy. Yeah, well, did you turn that rod at all? No. Okay, but anyways, we got a new rod to go in there, so um, what I'm going to do is actually pull this piston rod back to the point. I'm hoping, I was hoping I could get that sucker to come out there, but it's not going to come out. I think... I moved this bolt and it comes out. What bolt? This one. You see how it's, it's connected to the piston? The connecting rod. Anyways, here's the old crankshaft. Uh, as you may or may not remember, the journals were just completely shot on this from being hammered. The guy ran it for like two hours just banging away. Uh, so that's out. I am going to reuse my bearing housings because there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, I'm going to clean them up real nice and uh, put them all back together right. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to show you the interior of the engine and how much sludge and slop is in there. I got this hose here. Oh, shit, I got too much light. Um, yeah, it's not going to focus. Anyway, there's just a bunch of stuff in there. You can see the dirt. Oh, let me get on the other side. It might focus better. Uh, I bought new bearings to go in those housings, but uh, I don't know, maybe you can see better here. Uh, that's where the filter housing is over there in the corner, tip of my finger. This is a camshaft gear. Uh, there's just a bunch of stuff in the bottom here. And what I'm going to do is pretty simple. I'm just going to uh, scrape it out and down the hole and into the pot here to uh, collect down there. And then what I'll do tomorrow, because we're about done for tonight, is real simple. We're just going to take some diesel fuel and we're gonna wash it down in there and clean it out as best we can because I don't want my new bearings and connecting rod and if somebody actually says you cannot replace a connecting rod while it is in the tractor without removing the head they're wrong. You can. Uh, it takes a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit extra time and uh, two people but you can do it. Uh, you just take one clip out the bottom, drop it away, take the oil lines off, and the wrist pin will come out far enough, and ba-bing, ba-boom, whatever you got, and it's done. So, anyway, I think me and Tim are going to call it a night. Uh, yeah, we're going to call it a night. We're going to go home, and we're going to eat, and we're going to go to bed, and tomorrow morning we are going to start the reassembly of the John Deere 60. So, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Yes.